Jeff Henderson is a celebrity chef who has starred on TV shows and authored best-selling books. What makes Henderson's story unique is that he didn't learn to cook in the classroom. He learned while serving time in prison. I sat down with Chef Jeff in Taylor's dining room to hear his story of redemption and how he got from the very bottom to the very top. I didn't become a chef the traditional way. You know, I've never been to culinary school. I'm a self-taught. Uh, many mentors and organizations gave me uh, some great opportunities. Uh, there was a dark period in my life. You know, I made some poor choices as a young person growing up in poverty in Southern California and got involved with drugs during the 1980s and um, went to prison for some time. But how long were you in prison? I was in prison almost a decade. No and kidding. Yeah. And as you know, I always tell folks is that I never looked to be a chef or found food. Food found me in a dark place. But I thank God that I was able to turn it around and that dark place became a light place. And, and that, what happened? Did you work in the kitchen? Or? Yes, actually, I did apply for the kitchen job in prison. Uh, I got fired on my job. I used to work on a Cadillac crew with the Wall Street uh, gazillionaires who were in prison for, you know, white collar crimes. And uh, I was so attracted to these guys because they taught business, marketing, public relation classes. And I stopped going to my regular job. They fired me and they put me on pot and pan detail. And the <laughs> chef was born. <laughs> a cook first, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, did you did you learn the basics there? I mean, I, you you think of prison food as being pretty bland and yes. not too creative. Well, you know, it's interesting because institutional food. You know, we still had ground beef, we had chicken, we had uh, pork, we had rice, we had various vegetables, and we made the best out of what we had. You know, so we took pride in what we cooked. So I was able to learn the basic basics of institutional cooking, which gave me a foundation for when I was released to come into the professional food world. So then you came out and you started looking for uh, jobs in food service, huh? Yes, well, you know, uh, prison really gave me a foundation, not just cooking, but a foundation of education. Uh, I built character and integrity in prison. I, uh, I, I found, you know, education was gonna be my only meal ticket coming out. And I began to write famous chefs. Uh, from the inside and a chef by the name of Robert Gatsby gave me an opportunity in Beverly Hills and he brought me into a white tablecloth five-star restaurant as a dishwasher. Is that at the Bel Air uh, Hotel? Bel Air, I eventually went to the Bel Air but yeah. uh, Gatsby was an independent restaurant. Well, one, one thing that doesn't have anything to do with food but I think I, people would be interested What's it like when you that first day you get out or, or the, maybe the week before you get out? Yes. Well, there's a term we use in prison called 90 days in the wake up. So three months prior to getting out, there's a whole lot of emotions that run through your mind, the fear of the unknown. Uh, are you gonna have supporters when you get out? Are you gonna be able to make a living? Are you gonna survive? Are you gonna make it? Because coming out of prison after a decade, you're like in a time warp. Well, tell us a little bit, kind of take us through the ladder you climbed to, okay. to get to the top. Well, coming out of prison, um, I was faced with a lot of challenges and adversity. Uh, being an African-American male, uneducated, with a prison GED, with a prison culinary background, I had to do a lot of convincing. So I had to make the felony jacket disappear. So I had to really learn and understand middle class values. I had to understand high end cuisine because most of the California French cuisine that I was trained in, uh, those were ingredients and proteins and vegetables I never had before. So I had to start tasting everything from raspberries and blackberries to venison to foie gras to rack of lamb. And it was like, these were just- Pretty new. good, wasn't it? It was pretty good. <laughs> I said, that that kind of drove my, uh, my, my um, inspiration there. And uh, so uh, the chef acclimated me on the cooking line. He taught me, I was very passionate, and I moved on from that restaurant to Marriott, to Hotel Bel Air, L'Hermitage, very high-end five-star, five-diamond properties. A lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in, in the course of all that, you learned a lot about catering, I assume. Absolutely. I mean, we've done uh, high-end parties for up to 100 at the Hotel Bel Air, you know, super high-end clientele, A-list Hollywood, uh, uh, CEOs of corporations would have weddings and different things there. So I really learned a lot about detail. I really learned about uh, uh, the, the habits, the eating habits, customer service, internally and externally at these high-end properties, especially at Ritz-Carlton. You know, they have a great training program. People kind of underestimate probably just the sheer management job of managing all the people 
you have to manage to turn out the product you want when you want it. Absolutely, but prison gave me that foundation because I was the head inmate cook and head inmate baker. So I managed over a hundred uh, fellow inmates in prison. So I really became cultural intelligent in prison where I was Plus able there's to some risk if you did it poorly. Absolutely. <laughs> well, this is where that management piece came in because, you know, in prison you have mafia guys, you know, you have guys serving life in prison. So I had to find very creative ways to delegate creative ways to give constructive criticism. And those traits helped me once I came out of prison. So they were transferable skills. So me becoming um, uh, culturally aware of folks from all around the world really helped me in the high-end food world. So you became uh, the head chef at Bellagio. Well, actually the head chef of uh, Cafe Bellagio, which is one of 15 restaurants at the world famous Bellagio Hotel. That was a pinnacle for my culinary career. Uh, my goal, my dream was always to work at the Bellagio. I call it the Big B, the Bentley of them all. And uh, it took me uh, three years to get hired there. So I had a lot of fine tuning to do. I had to build a lot of relationships and I had to prove myself, uh, build my resume and uh, put the time in and it paid off. The clientele in Vegas in a casino is a little different from a freestanding hotel, high end, whether it's Beverly Hills, New York, or San Francisco, because your customer there could have just lost $10 million. Yeah. So when they come to order the food, they're very tense, they're upset. If something isn't right, uh, I had a, a big well from out of Saudi Arabia, uh, a, a contractor who built many of the palaces and the homes for the Saudi princes. And he always came for breakfast, and his pancake syrup had to be boiling hot you know, for his waffles. And uh, they always page me to come in and said, the prince is here. So make sure everything is super hot. We had like 10 guys on one plate, <laughs> making sure everything was right. So it's a different set of challenges, but very rewarding. Well, d tell us how you got into television. Wow, let me tell you, it's, it's, it's surreal, unsurreal. Um, uh, a guy from New York, a, a culinary agent, reached out to me and asked me would I be interested in writing a book based on my life. I went from drug dealer to prison chef to gourmet chef and they were fascinated and we wrote a proposal and we shopped it in New York called Cooked from the streets to the stove and the book went into op uh, uh, auction with some of the top publishing houses in New York and we wrote the book and the next thing I was on Oprah the next thing I had a movie deal with Will Smith, Sony Columbia Pictures. Then I had a Food Network deal. Then I got a cookbook deal. It just happened all at once. And I was yeah. like, I can't believe this. What, what would be two or three of your signature dishes? Hmm, interesting. I love the slow process of cooking. So I love braised meats, you know, oxtails, short ribs, and things of that nature because the flavor gets to really marry uh, with those vegetables, those aromatics in that meat, and the wine reduction and things like that over mashed potatoes. I, I'm, I'm a farm to table, neighborhood dive type of chef, and I, I love that cuisine. Uh, I started off baking when I was in prison, so I love to bake. I love pastries and things of that nature. But most of all, I love the people in the kitchen. I love meat young folks who come from all different like walks of life, social economic backgrounds, and really inspire them because of my story. When people, young folks feel they don't know if they can make it, I said, look, you know, I learned to cook in prison. I started at the bottom. I've never been to culinary school. I'm self-taught. Hey, if I can do it, I know you can do it. So helping them find a vehicle uh, to be successful in this hospitality industry is a major goal of mine. Now, do you have a restaurant now? I don't have a restaurant now. You know, it's interesting how... I'm too busy with television. And well, doing a television, doing what I'm doing here at, at Oklahoma State, um, my career has really taken a different path. And my story of redemption and transformation, so many organizations and schools and nonprofit call me to work with young people, troubled people, challenged people, and help them figure out what their gift is and how to, how to parlay that gift into the dream. And I think that's truly my calling. Like food was the vessel for me to teach and educate and inspire folks. So I do more teaching and lecturing now than I do cooking. Well, you, you're doing a good job of it. You've got, but you do have another show coming out, don't you? Uh, I'm working on a new show right now as well, and uh, it has to do with entertainment, lifestyle, and food. So it's fantasy football. We just filmed the first uh, pilot last week, and I'm not a, a huge sports guy, so I do the food smack talking versus uh, <laughs> doing the, the, the NFL smack talking. You, you know? Give me a smack. Give me some smack talking. Okay. For food. Hi, I'm Chef Jeff, and welcome to Oklahoma State University. Today is lunchtime, and we got country pork, chicken fried pork with green beans and country gravy. 
Jeff Henderson was on our Stillwater campus as part of the Distinguished Chef Series. Each year, our School of Hospitality and Tourism Management invites four special chefs to work with our students and serve a very special dinner for the public. For information on how to attend the Chef Series, call 405-744-6713. I'm Bern Sargas, and we'll see you next time on Inside OSU.